Hi, welcome back to the Amber Shows. Just wanted to talk about a couple things real quick on this bright, beautiful, sunny day. And all over, it's being good. The weather is really being good this time of the year. Well, it's not, I don't know how good of a thing it is. I mean, it's good for us who don't have to, you know, be bundled up or be bothered with slush and snow and things like that. But the East Coast is actually still warm and it does have to do with climate control, which is really not a good thing because of the effects of what's going on in the world, the greenhouse. So the greenhouse effect can be good as far as the, you're enjoying the weather here in December, but yet and still it's not natural and it's not how it's really supposed to be. Okay, so unless you're living up underneath a uh, rock, you know that Kim and Kanye West have named their little boy Saint. Um, you know, if you know me, you know I'm a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I have many thoughts about that, just like I have thoughts about Bobby Christina dying the same way as her mother, her mother dying a Grammy night, um, uh, you know, with uh, Clive uh, uh, Davis is in charge of, uh, of everything, and, uh, you know, and I believe he's head of the devil makers of the Illuminati with the entertainment, and uh, this, this, these are my own thoughts. I'm not going to get into it a lot. But, you know, if you are curious about the Illuminati, um, you know, do some reading and research and you'll see how far. It's no different uh, of a clique as any other devil worshippers uh, or the Masons. They have their own club, um, any gang members, whatever. Whatever club you belong to, um, there are certain rules, regulations and things that happen. You have a wizard, a master wizard, things like that. Naming your child saint. Uh, during you know um, this Christian holiday, uh, to me uh, it says a lot. Um, just uh, you know, so anyway, he's a healthy baby, um, and congratulations on his birth. But for some reason, I just got that feel that um, remember Rosemary's baby. That's what I get from all of this. Um, you know, just it's a boy. Um, they went to, um, they were in Armenia, they went to Armenia where she's from and her and Kanye and they went to that church. And every, the Armenian church is like dark and you wear dark clothes and veils and the priestess, they wear those high priestess hats with the veils. It's just all real spooky to me, all very halloween -y. Listen, down here in Florida, a burglary suspect, let me tell you what he did. He's not the smartest person in the world. He called his girlfriend and said that he was in Broward County and that there are some beautiful homes there and him and his friend were there and they were going to burglarize a couple of homes. They, they know that the people were away for the holidays. Well, one of the neighbors saw that this guy was burglarizing. His name is Todd Goodyear. Uh, he was burglarizing the home and they called the police. So him and his friend, they split up and to hide and uh, Todd Goodyear decided to hide in right outside on the banks of one of the little rivers that's right here, down here in Florida. And a gator grabbed him, took him, and ate him. They have euthanized that gator. They found his clothes and, and shoes at the edge of the bank and scraps of pieces of his body. Um, they found the gator and um, that gator's been killed. So, that'll teach you a lesson. You don't go hiding in a lake. Not in Florida. This is the Gator Town. This is Gator Town. Well, rest in peace, Todd Goodyear. That was your last burglary. I wonder if they got the jewelry and stuff that he had stole. Okay. Um, Patty uh, LaBelle, uh, you know, it's a big deal about her pies, blah, blah, blah. Well, now, uh, they're saying that uh, Patty, the guy who did the song, you know, he uh, did, was invited to Patty's house. Patty uh, gave him a seven hundred, a seven thousand uh, dollar Louis Vuitton bag, which I would have preferred the seven thousand dollars cash. And uh, now they're going to do uh, a cooking special. So tune in uh, so you can see their cooking special coming soon. Those of you who saw. Um, Empire, it was fabulous last week. They'll be tuning, they'll be coming back on in 
March, you'll be able to enjoy them again. And last night uh, on VH1, they had uh, uh, nominees for um, the big uh, stars uh, that had great shows and success with their movies and their um, TV shows and the VH1 awards. And it was really good. And uh, Amy Schumer, she's so funny. She was on with Amber Rose. You know, I happen to like Amber Rose. I'm one of the people that like her. Uh, so, you know, she's, um, she's very funny. And she's been in a couple of movies that I saw her in, where she just, uh, on tel tel TV movies, and she was very funny. So she seems like she's going like the comedic route. And you know, a lot of times when people talk about you real bad anyway, you should talk about yourself, and then that takes the joke away. So, uh, and that's what she does. And I, I enjoyed her uh, last night. Uh, also, uh, Taraji P. Henson received an award as well. And she was very humble with her award. It was given to her by Debbie Allen. And it was a very good show. If you get a chance to catch it again, uh, you know, they'll be running uh, that, sh that show again. Also, uh, if you can catch on VH1, they had the um, Mark, the Mark, was it on VH1 or Reels? I'm not sure, but check your guides on your television, but they had um, the Mark Twain Prize Award uh, was given to Eddie Murphy. And that was a really good show too. So if you get a chance and you haven't seen it, check them both out. Uh, Eddie Murphy's was very funny as well. In Beijing, it looks like a horror movie. Um, right now there's so much pollution that the people there can't even see themselves within 600 feet in front of them. Everybody is walking around in masks. The, pollu the pollution there is terrible. And uh, I don't know what's happening over there, but you can't even see the person in front of you. It's very, very a serious situation going on in Beijing. Um, now, guess what? New York was voted the most unhappiest place. Now, the only reason I could think about uh, New York being unhappy is the mice and the rats that roam all through that town. That's the only thing. I can't think of anything else that you would be unhappy about living in New York because if you're lonely, there are so many people. You can go outside. Places are open all the time. And you can always talk to people. Stores are open. Um, you can go to bookstores. You can go to computer stores and browse or read. You can go to the parks. You know, so so many different things that you can do in New York. So I don't know why it's unhappy unless you're living somewhere where you got to go home and there's a bunch of mice and rats. And that makes me unhappy. Um, baby junkies, very sad story uh, today I was watching where so many babies are being born addicted to heroin. You know, now they're saying it's a huge epidemic, uh, heroin users, young girls, white young girls, uh, especially in Maryland, they're saying a really bad epidemic. Uh, in Mississippi, it's a really bad epidemic. Uh, it's really sad, and I watched uh, uh, with, uh, with almost closed eyes, a little baby they showed who was going through withdrawals. And they shake and they throw up. And they're actually looking for people, uh, for volunteers, where you can go and hug these babies and hold the babies at the hospitals. So if you don't have anything to do or you, you want to do something different and give of yourself and your time, uh, go to a hospital, uh, ask about, uh, they have border babies and babies that are, on with, are withdrawing from drugs and uh, take time out of your day to sit down and hug them and hold them uh, for an hour or two. Uh, it would give, make you feel better and of course you're giving back and make the babies feel better. Many of the babies don't even live through the withdrawal. Uh, the mothers, of course, the babies are taken from them and many have to go through many, many uh, changes for rehab for themselves and uh, parenting classes even if they could, to try and get their children back if the child does survive. It's a very sad thing, but I do notice that this is not the first time that this has happened. Um, years ago, my sister told me, and this was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, where when she gave birth that there were junkie babies in the hospitals and how sad it was to see those babies going through withdrawal, but they were all black and Spanish. But now it's white babies. So now, of course, there's attention being drawn to it. But go to your local hospitals if you want to volunteer and hug what's called a border baby. Those are babies where there are just so many babies that are being given 
just being abandoned by their moms. When you go back to the bed, they're gone, the mothers are gone, and you'll be able to uh, hold, hold, hold them and hug them for some hours. The border babies have to actually live in the hospitals until there's an opening for them to go into a foster care or an orphanage, and it can take up to a year or two years, and those babies are actually